Thank you, Dr. Mike. I have just learned the tip from Dr. Kirino on how to be sure to wash yourself for kind of clothes. So happy good morning to all of us. Thank you. 
in Vietnam. At the ASEAN Business and Investment Summit last year, the President identified the corridor's approach for encouraging development, especially in areas that are left behind. The strategy is being used to deny Jerusalem, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, East ASEAN Growth Area, or BIF Iaga, where Mindanao and Palau are part of the Greater Sulu Sulawesi Economic Corridor. Internally, we use the same approach in Mindanao as the framework for integrating and ensuring transport interconnectivity, investment promotion, innovation, logistic support, industry development, and environmental integrity. The strategy also ensures integrated, harmonized, and coordinated planning and programming through the Joint Planning and Programming or JPP approach. Government agencies such as DPWH, DPWH ARMM, NEDA, RPDO ARMM, and MIDA jointly review, endorse, and facilitate inclusion in the national investment budget interconnectivity projects like roads, bridges, ports, and airports. The same is being done for tourism infrastructure with DOT and TSA, agriculture with DA, and EXO development with PESA. Anchored on this corridor's approach, MIDA has identified 12 catalytic projects that are seen to not only set up the physical infrastructure, but also serve as the engine for more economic activities across Mindanao and bring development closer to the far-flung communities. At the forefront of these projects is the Trans-Mindanao High-Speed Railway System. A long time dream of Mindanao, we shall be complemented by a massive push for reliable and sustainable power to achieve the 3,000 megawatts requirement of Mindanao by 2030. The establishment of the Tawi Tawi Integrated Seaport and Economic Zone is another major catalytic investment that supports Mindanao and Philippines bid to become stronger player in the BIMP Yaga and ASEAN communities. Consequently, to influence transformation of other Mindanao regions through agriculture, we are also pushing for the establishment of agroeconomic ag zones, as well as the establishment of the Pekong Free Port and Ag Zone. In all of this, strengthen institutions, partnerships, and networks at the national, subnational, and local levels will be the foundation for an integrated and globally competitive towards performing these tasks has acquired momentum under the new and assertive administration, the Mindanao challenge still moves. With the apparent regional disparity in terms of national roads paid, average income, poverty rate, malnutrition rate, and project prioritization, Mindanao, touted as the country's gateway to the BIM Yaga and the CIA, still has a lot of catching up to do. This is why MINDA and the Mindanao Affairs Committee is rigorously advocating for a responsive Mindanao budget to finance and accelerate its inclusive and sustainable development. The increased budget will be used to fund the 12 catalytic projects identified and proposed by MINDA. In line with the President's policy of localizing project implementation of strategic projects in Mindanao, <coughs> it is further recommended to enhance MINDA's capability for the implementation of these projects, particularly the Mindanao Railway System. Adhering to the Duterte administration's promise of development that is felt by all, we need to make sure that nobody gets left behind in our quest for growth. At the heart and soul of this quest, is the systemic shift to federalism, the backbone for a meaningful national change, and the key to achieving just and lasting peace in Mindanao. We are one with the President in achieving this dream for the Basamora people and the rest of Mindanao. A change in administration will bring with it a change of directions. But Mindanao, as a strategic planning agency for Mindanao, will continue to prioritize projects and focuses for the sustained development of the island region to uplift the quality of lives for every man.
an analogy or metaphor about the season, uh, where there should be balance, uh, development, or development should be felt by all. Uh, for us, nandun din yung ating sanginda, uh, the big dream, big stands for B for that balance, and I for inclusive, and then G for growth that is sustainable, which the many of us also share this one. And uh, Complementary was the Ukrainian three SS, which he learned uh, when he managed the uh, Malawi city situation. The S is about security, and another the second S is about solidarity, and the third S is separate sustainable peace and development. For us, Minda and Mindanaoans, we have uh, I, E Y E, four AIs, eight na AIs. Not, not not the better eyes. The first big eye is even the fourth industrial revolution is also uh, trying to achieve the IQL, improved quality of life. And there are seven related eyes that will lead towards achieving that IQL. The first is you have a present canina, the mineral development corridors, pursuit. Uh, the strategy I mean, pursues the first eye, interconnectivity in by infrastructure. The second eye is for investors to be interested to invest in it now is the incentives. That's why we're pursuing uh, agro-economic zone strategy in strategic areas and tourist provinces in it now. If you have incentives, then the third the third eye will come in the investments. And with those investments, the fourth item will come in, the industries, uh, very relevant, nothing fire. And the fifth will be, sino ba mag ito? It's going to be the institutions. So we have the PIDS, the National Research Council, the business, the MKC, the Nomadic Centers, implementing agencies, etc. The business groups, sila yung engine of God. But yung, yung parang, Conscience of the other four eyes or five eyes will be the entitled to the environment. And uh, the seventh eye will be, which is our very big this morning, the, is end of the job. So, since I've been Dr. Kirino this morning, that they aim to become part of the 1,000 top universities in the entire world. And I'd like to share our research using the World Economic Forum about innovation, which can be used as a reference when we pursue our fire and create our future today. Like you have Korea is the most innovative country in the world, followed by Sweden, which has the most number of their population that have university education. And Singapore with the most excellent university system or education system. And then you have Germany leading in the high tech startups. Japan, I being driven by medium sized enterprises in that. The innovation is driven by medium sized enterprises. Switzerland has the world-class research institute. And then you have Finland, although but they are the leading country in knowledge management. France naman is leading in terms of disruptive technology and innovation. While Israel is the country with the biggest investment in our for the Tao Majeli is no longer research and development, but research for development. So with that, you pong advocacy ng media is more on establishing also the Kirino culture. Uh, and then PIDS, the MPC, the academy, including the uh, implementing agencies and local government units, including the business group, uh, sorry, uh, This is culture for research for development. And the second culture uh, Dr. Kirino will be the culture for innovation. If Mindanaoans or Mindanao in the, uh, among the other island regions in the country, we have the kind of culture.
groups of foreign education. And wala itong groups of tatalawa, kung wala din yung groups of synergy of the two. So with that, we hope that uh, this forum uh, will establish that kind of culture starting today. We will create our future and we will start with a happy culture. Again, on behalf of Sai and Sai and the rest of the Linda team, happy morning to all of us. Thank you, Director Tan. The next speaker, there are actually two speakers for the topic, the fourth industrial revolution, opportunities and challenges for the Philippines. Let me start with the first speaker for this topic. He is a full professor at the Manufacturing, Engineering and Management Department, College of Engineering of the La Salle University. He is a university fellow and holds the highest faculty rank of full professor 10. His research interests include artificial intelligence, evolutionary systems, physiologic, manufacturing processes, neural networks, robotics, software engineering automation, and intelligent systems. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to Dr. Elmer Daniels. This is sometimes the bits of the new technology. Anyway, uh, my talk is about the uh, background of the fourth industrial revolution, and I have only 10 minutes because my colleague Ramon Amonetti <laughs> also talking uh, about the challenges and opportunities of the industrial revolution. For the industrial revolution. So, this is uh, unfortunate that my 10 minutes has been consumed already. Steam. 
Now, the tagline, uh, rather the description, it started in the UK, uh, the mechanization of the textile industries. And also, uh, before, most of the manufacturing are conducted at homes and small shops. We call it back, uh, backyard industry. And then transition using hand tools, basic machines to power special purpose machinery and factories happen. Uh, another slide, please. Okay. The outcome of this is the uh, crop of workers and factories destroy the machinery as a means of protest. So there was really, literally a revolution. Okay. Just what we are uh, having fears now that we will we lose our job because of the robotization. But uh, they proved that to be wrong. It improved the transportation, uh, uh, the steam engine, uh, it improved the communication and banking. And also it increased manufacturing uh, products and definitely improved the standard or quality of living. And in other words, this causes a growth in coal, uh, iron, and textile. Next slide, please. The second industrial revolution happened in the 1870s and 1940s. And this was the mass production of uh, uh, using electricity. So this is marked as the birth of the assembly lines and uh, mass production. Now, there were new innovations, uh, the inventions on steel, uh, also uh, the petroleum and electricity production lead to the introduction of the cars and even airplanes. So, uh, there was a replacement of steel, uh, uh, iron, and uh, this was utilized in construction and even in machines, railroads, and even in ships and others uh, improved that. So in this case, uh, during the second industrial revolution, inventions and inventions are based on engineering and science. So there must be a very thorough design of this new invention. Next slide, please. So the outcome, as you can see, the first electric uh, railroad, and then also the birth of radio communications, uh, the radio wave transmission uh, crosses the Atlantic, and also, of course, the diesel engine. And due to the benefits and wealth of new inventions or new ideas in the second industrial revolutions, this is going to be very positive and very high growth to the community. Next slide, please. So the third industrial revolution happened in 1950s and 1980s. This is now what we call the automation using digital electronic information technology. So mass production now becomes digital technology. So it is described as uh, manufacturing uh, uh, not to be a digital revolution. Okay? So this is a combination between mechanical and analog electronic technologies. The birth of computer, uh, digital mobile phone, and the internet. Okay? Next slide, please. Now comes to this stage, the fourth industrial revolution. It is very timely. We are celebrating also Fourth Mindanao Policy Research Forum. And we are also now in Fourth Industrial Revolution. So this is innovation based in the fusion of the physical, digital, and biological. So integration of things is the key here. It's not only on hardware side, it's not only on software side, but also both biological and physical. So this is where emerging technology breakthroughs comes in. 
both in the field of robotics, artificial intelligence, the internet of things, uh, the autonomous vehicles, because we have now the nanotechnology, biotechnology, material science, energy storage, and even quantum computing. Next slide, please. So, uh, if you look at this fourth industrial revolution, we have now cars without a driver. This is the part of autonomous car. Uh, visual assistance also is there. Uh, software that can translate and analyze and identify information that can give decision support to managers is available. And also this is the part of social media, of course the, uh, the young ones. Uh, uh, demand for better services. And many companies now, with has a vision, uh, are currently examining the way they do business. Next slide, please. So the outcome will transform the lives of the people in coming years. Okay? Report on Google self-driving uh, car provide uh, uh, better and safer to use these cars without a driver. And also, the application of Internet of Things will definitely automate people's daily activities. And uh, uh, you will, if it comes that your refrigerator will just text you and inform you that you have more food inside your bed. And your air conditioners, you know, get inside into your room, it just switch on, and you go out, you switch off. And comes time that your robot will cook for you. Next slide, please. Now, with this uh, industrial revolution, it is coupled with the evolutions of the machines that we will develop also. So, talking of machines, uh, we are referring now to a robot. So, there are five generations of the robot. The first one, of course, the robot that we use for the industry. This is the pick and place robot. Uh, it does uh, manufacturing automation. And the second one, the social uh, robot. Uh, these are robots that give uh, fun to people. It can do private services and public services. Uh, we have a robot that can guide you if you are on the board. You go to the museum, robot can guide you, talk to you. We have also a uh, ubiquitous robot uh, where machines can communicate from one another. Uh, this is the Internet of Things now, where one machine uh, can, can do the sensors uh, and then feed that information to other machines and then these other machines can do the actions. And of course, the fourth generation robot is the genetic robot and then the fifth is the bio robot. You can see now robots that operate persons, the, uh, uh, the, the Da Vinci robot, it can, uh, it can uh, scan, it can do the surgical for individual. Next slide, please. So of course, we need to talk robot. Uh, the point there is how to put the knowledge, how to put the intelligence to the robot. So we're dealing now with artificial intelligence. So the, the, the thing is, when you do intelligence system, it means that machine can reason now. When you see reason now, can understand what is right and what is wrong. That is the very important essence of uh, the intelligence that we are going to put into the machines. Next slide, please. Now, there are facts on industrial revolution. Next, please. So, for the last three revolutions, it is clear that machines substitute manual labor but the living standards of people are improved over time because more value-added product uh, was created. Now, in this fourth industrial revolution, we are afraid that subsequent job growth could be minimal because many of the new jobs created might be filled by sophisticated robots and machines. Uh, that is a fact. Next slide, please. So 